In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to easily make interactive dashboards in Excel to help people digest and understand information a lot faster. If you're new here, my name's Aldo and I do work at Microsoft, but I also love making videos to help people use their computers better. With that being said, let's get straight into this. So you can see here in front of us, we have about six months worth of sales data around about fruit that's been sold in and across Australian states. The first thing I wanna do is convert this information into a table. So I'm gonna select on column or cell 1A, then I'll press Control A, to keyboard shortcut to highlight everything. And then in the Home tab, I'm gonna select on Format as a table, and then pick a table that works well for you. I'll just select on this simple one for now. Make sure you do have the option of My Table Has Headers selected. This way Excel knows the top row is the Table Headers, and go ahead and select on OK. One thing you'll notice is that in the sales column, even though we have a dollar sign, everything under that is actually just regular numbers. So we want to convert this into dollars as well. So let's select on F2 or the cell F2, use the keyboard shortcut, control shift down, and then that's going to highlight the entire column. And then in the home tab, we're just going to select on the dollar sign. So instead of being a general number, we tell it that this is actually dollars. If your table gets these hash tags or hash symbols, that just means the column isn't wide enough. If we grab it here and expand it out, then that just shows you all of the dollars next to it. Awesome. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create a couple of pivot tables. There are a few different ways to make pivot tables and I'll show you two options right now. The first option is selecting on insert and then you've got the option of pivot, uh, pivot table or you've got recommended pivot tables. If you're new to pivot tables, I'd recommend starting with the option here of recommended ones to see what Excel uh, thinks is best for your table. So you can see here, it's recommending things like the sum of sales by fruit or the uh, quantity by fruit. If you scroll down, it does make fancier and more expansive pivot tables. But for this example, let's create our first one by a simple sum of sales by fruit and select on OK. And you can see here, it's made a really basic pivot table. Let's go ahead and select on our sales data again. And we're gonna make a pivot table this time by going insert. And instead of going recommended, let's actually drop down the option of pivot table and then choose the option of from table slash range. It's gonna understand the tables in your sheet and it's already selected this one here. You can tell by the, the dotted lines going around it. It's gonna add it to a new worksheet because it's got the option here of new worksheet selected and then simply select on OK. And here we can build our own pivot table. So for this pivot table, I'm gonna go ahead and add the date and the quantity. And this is gonna show how many uh, fruits we sold, we sold overall for that date but I'm also gonna actually add the fruit as well. And this will give us a nice breakdown, but I'm gonna drag the option of fruit and put it here into columns. So it really breaks it down nice and easily for us. Next, we're gonna highlight all this information here. Then in the insert tab, we're gonna choose a chart. So you could use some of the recommended charts. One that I'm gonna grab is of course the column chart, but I actually like the option of a stacked column chart because this shows you how many fruits were sold um, in the month, but it puts it on top of each other. It makes it a lot easier to understand uh, instead of being uh, side by side as a clustered column chart. Let's go ahead and select on OK. And you can see here that we can see the breakdown of how many fruits were sold, which fruits were, were sold. So you can sort of see that uh, Apple sold really well in January and again in August. In July, there was a really big spike of oranges. One thing we can see with this chart is that we have a few of these headers like the sum of the quantity and the months and the date. I really don't want these to be here. So I'm gonna right click on these and then I'm gonna choose to hide all the fields on this chart because that'll make it a much nicer, cleaner chart. You can also tell that right now we don't actually have a heading on this chart. So I'm gonna press the plus button then I'm gonna select on the option of add a chart title, and then let's give this a quick title. Awesome, it is looking really good. We have our total sales by month. Let's go to that first pivot table that we created, and let's turn this into another chart as well by selecting on it, choosing the insert tab, and then going through the recommended charts. This is our sum of sales by fruit. 
I actually like breaking this into a bit of a pie chart uh, and going on insert. We've dropped this guy in. Again, let's tidy this up by right clicking and hiding all the fields and then double clicking on the title and calling this total sales. On this one here, I would also add using the plus button, the data labels. So we can see here how much each fruit has made over that six month period. You can go ahead and choose where you wanna put these. Uh, I actually think the outside of each is actually much easier than make it a nice big chart. And we can see the total sales breakdown by each of the different fruits. Let's go ahead and add one more chart here. So let's select on our data, choose table. Let's add a pivot table and add a new workbook. And what we wanna see here is our sales over the past few months. And then let's highlight all this data. Let's insert and I think we'll get a line chart. And let's customize this one more time by right clicking and hiding all the fields on here. Double clicking on the title, sales by month. Awesome, now that we have our three graphs here, we're gonna add a brand new sheet, bring it to the front, right click, and we're gonna rename this. And we're gonna call this fruit sales dashboard. And then we're gonna select on our three charts that we've created, and go ahead and paste them on here. If you press the Alt button, it actually helps you snap it into place, which just makes it a bit tidier when you are building out the dashboard. Right click, copy on our second chart, paste it in. Our third chart, sales by month copy, paste. Awesome, so you can see we have our three charts here. Really easy to understand, but what we wanna do now is actually add a bit more information to make this into an interactive dashboard. Here, if we select on any of our three pivot charts, we can choose on the pivot chart analyzer, and you have a few options here to insert a slicer as well as insert a timeline. The timeline is quite cool. We're gonna select on date and okay. And then what this allows us to do is actually highlight a particular month or a set of months that we would like to analyze. Uh, this is great when you have a large set of data. Then of course we can hit the clear filter when you wanna to expand to all that data in front of you. What you saw there though was when I'm selecting on something, it is only impacting the one chart that I'm on. It's not actually affecting the other two right now. If you wanted to connect this slicer to all of the other charts, you wanna right click on it, choose the option of report connections, and then make sure you select all of the different pivot tables and select on okay. So now when we select on the slicer, it will actually show us across all of the different charts here it is making a change to them. Cool, now let's add a few more slices by selecting on one of those charts, selecting pivot chart analyzer one more time from the top, and then choosing insert slicer. And maybe this time we wanna add a state slicer and a fruit slicer and select on okay. Let's move things around so they all fit nice and neatly, and then add our states in. Again, once you've added these slices in, you can see once when you've selected it, it is only impacting that one graph. But if you right click on that slicer, choose report connections and select on all the pivot tables again, make sure you do this for both of those slices. And then you can go ahead and select on a few of these now. Maybe we're gonna get rid of these. We're just gonna search for apples and bananas across four states and territories, and we're gonna do it over the first four months. All of these slices are now connected. We can go ahead and hit clear on all of this, and you can pull up your entire graph again. So really cool right now. Cool, so we can see that we have our sales started here from January all the way to September, but what happens when you have additional sales? Well, down the bottom, we have a tab called additional sales, and this has the sales data from October all the way to the end of the year. We'll simply select on all of this data here. We're gonna copy it, and then we're gonna paste it into our original data set that we turned into a table. Excel's gonna continue that information down. Then when we go back to our graph, we're gonna select on one of those pivot tables. Then under the pivot chart analyze option, 
we're gonna drop down the option of refresh and select on refresh all. And you'll see here that information updated. So now we have the sales for the entire year from January all the way to December. So really, really cool. So let's go ahead and start tidying this up so it looks a little bit more like a dashboard and a little less like an Excel workbook. First thing I'd recommend is selecting all of the sheets down the bottom by pressing and holding shift, uh, selecting on the first sheet next to your dashboard, holding shift and selecting the last one. It's gonna highlight all of them, right click and then simply go hide. So we can only see the fruit dashboards uh, down so we can only see the fruit sales dashboard option down the bottom. Then under the view section, we can actually go ahead and change our table layout. So we're gonna turn off things like the grid line and the formula bar and the data types and the headings. So you can really adjust and remove a lot of um, the bits that make Excel look like Excel. And this looks a lot more like a cleaner dashboard. The last thing I'd recommend is adding a bit of customization color to your charts here. Easiest way is selecting on page layout, dropping down the theme option, and then picking one that works great for you. Um, you can, of course, create your own. You can choose the different color palettes as well. Or if you wanted to, and if you had time, oh, let's not do that. You could right click on each of these and go through and manually color your charts for yourself. I think the theme option in Excel gives you a really easy and fast way of customizing how your ta uh, table looks. Once you've finished building and customizing your dashboard, go ahead, save it into your OneDrive, then hit the share option. And then you could either choose to copy a link or hit the share option and then send this via OneDrive to your colleagues so they can work on the dashboard as well. And there you go. It is that easy to create an interactive dashboard in Excel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.